Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. And uh, today what we've got for you is uh, not an RV repair, but we're gonna be doing some modifications on my dump trailer. Um, we're having a good time with this YouTube channel and um, it's, an, it's fun to see the outreach that we have from literally all over the world. Um, hey, Australia, hey, New Zealand, uh, hey, Canada, hey, UK. Um, uh, we've even gotten some comments from the Middle East. Um, I love you guys. I didn't know y'all had RVs over there. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. And cars all over the United States. So it's really fun. And you guys are sewing into us. So we're trying to sew into you. Uh, we're having a good time. I've got a cat about to jump on me. If he does, I'm just going to roll with it. His name's Diesel. We call him Diesel because that little motor purring thing that they do. He sounds like my diesel truck. Um, but anyway, so he's, he's looking like he's going to jump on me, but we'll just go with it. In this video, I'm be doing some modifications to my dump trailer. Um, we broke this video up into three parts. It's the first part is me installing a battery box on the dump trailer. The second one is a battery disconnect switch on the dump trailer. And the third video is going to be automating that dump trailer so I can control it with a remote control fob from in the cab of the truck or walking around to the back of it. And uh, we go over all that in the video. We almost weren't going to put this in the Marvy Works channel, but I do talk a lot about batteries and disconnects and we do some current loads and things things that really do apply to uh, RVs. So um, that's why we decided to throw it into the My RV Works channel. So um, that's what's going on. And uh, on the Life Kept Simple channel, it's just as we get time, we're having fun with it. Um, we bought some property. It's got three acres and a small little house on it. It's got a creek that runs through the backyard. And we bought a Kubota tractor dump trailer. We built a driveway. We installed a pool, a uh, swimming pool. We've uh, fixed a leak on my hot tub. Little little things like that. And um, if you're interested, it's you know you can just kind of see how how we live when we're not working on RVs. So that's the nature of the Kept, Life Kept Simple channel. But anyway, this one is about the battery box install. And um, I do talk about some different topics on batteries. So maybe you might get some benefit out of it. So enjoy the show. Well, hi folks, this is Darren with our Kept Simple channel. We're around here, life's kept simple. For Valentine's Day, my wife bought me a dump trailer and it goes perfectly with our Kubota tractor. And you'll be seeing more of both of these in action as we start developing more of our yard and we make more videos of that. But there's three things I wanted to do to this trailer and I wanted to make that the focus of this video. When we bought the trailer, the first thing is I wanted to put the battery. There's a battery in the front compartment here and I'm gonna bring you closer and we're gonna show you all that. But there's a battery in there and I wanted to put that battery in the battery box. It just seems to make sense that way. But there was something else. I wanted to wire that battery with one of these battery disconnects. So I have to have this key inserted in order to energize the battery, okay? And um, so that means when I'm parking this thing, I can take this red key with me. And then if you're a bad person and you wanna steal my trailer, great, you know, but you have to work a little bit harder to make all these connections. And um, I'm probably not gonna make it very easy for you to do that. So it, it's, don't even bother trying to take the trailer because it's gonna be difficult. So the first thing, the battery's gonna be in a battery box. The second thing, we're gonna have this key that you're gonna to have to have inserted into it to make connections to the motor. We'll always store it in this configuration, so it's not like you're gonna be going on a highway like this. Um, the third thing, which is kind of exciting that I'm eager to show you, is when I, let me, let me get the tether. There we go. So it comes with this, here we go, up and down. Okay, so I can control up and down with this remote here. They give me a length of wire and, you know, I can walk around the front of it really easily, but I can't really see the back while I'm dumping. And sometimes I want to look in the back while I'm dumping to find out if everything's out of it. And I always have to set this down. And that's magnetic. I can stick it on the side and that's always exciting and all. But I was thinking to myself, gee, wouldn't it be better if that was like radio controlled or remote controlled? Wouldn't that be kind of exciting? Well, I was an automation engineer for close to 30 years. So I know a thing or two about automating things. Um, and um, so I got this kit cheap. It was an industrial grade. Um, it's got this groovy 1980s uh, phone thing on it. And, um, but I picked this one over some others that I saw because this one claims to have stronger and longer range. Um, uh, the reviews on it whether they're real or imagined, um, basically said that the range was good. So we're going to try it out. We're going to find out if it's good or not. 
what this will do, so this is the remote control. I'll leave this in the cab of the truck or I'll walk around with me as I'm walking around, dumping and retracting. So it's got an A and a B button. And perhaps I'll make A the dump and B the retract mode. Um, the business end is this module here. It's what that communicates to wirelessly. And I'm going to wire this module in parallel with this module at the other end of these wires. Okay, so follow with me on this. They're basically the same, same wire. And then based on the wiring codes here, I got different colors, we'll wire them right in. So what that would do for us is it wouldn't matter if I was pushing this up button or this up button, we're still gonna energize the exact same wire, in this instance, pairs, to basically energize the motor and the solenoids to make the thing go up. And then when we push the down button or the B button, in this instance, we'll energize the circuits to make it go down. So that is what I'm gonna be doing with this trailer this afternoon, this evening. As long as we have some more light, if it gets dark, we'll pick up tomorrow. And um, the intent is that maybe you pick up some tips and tricks. And if you have a dump trailer, maybe it's something you wanna do. If not, hey wives, get your husband a dump trailer. They're really awesome. And um, yeah, we, she, the, the, where she picked this up was right next to a, like a Walmart. And I was coming back from service calls from our mobile RV service business. And uh, I was tired and grumpy. And uh, she's like, Darren, I need you to help me bring something home from Walmart. Um, I can't fit it in our van. And I'm like, oh, come on, baby. I just wanna go home, I'm tired. And um, I'm like, fine. So I pull into the Walmart parking lot and she hands me this envelope. She goes, here you go. I'm like, what, you couldn't have brought this home? She goes, open it. And I opened it up and it was the, the paperwork to go pick this thing up. And so we, we had to leave our service trailer in the parking lot and then go pick this thing up, bring this home, and then go back and get that. So yay, love my wife, uh, wonderful Valentine's Day present. And as an early Valentine's Day present, we got a Kubota tractor. But like I said, in other videos, you'll see us working on that. And um, um, anyway, so I wanted to improve that, uh, some of the features on this service trailer, on this um, dump trailer. So that's the nature of this video. So stick around, I'll bring you a little bit closer and I'll show you what we're gonna be working on. So what I'm going to do, I believe everybody can see in here, but the challenge is it's starting to get dark. And uh, so honestly, I might finish this up tomorrow because tomorrow the sun will be coming up more from the east and right now it's setting from the west but um but let's just see how far we can go with this now this wire here okay this is the one that's coming from the other end of this remote control okay so let's just type take a look and see where all these wires go and um i might even need to get you a little bit closer but it looks like we've got some solenoids right here and it's going to engage um, this solenoid. Uh, let's see here. I got four wires, a black, a brown, a green, and a blue, four wires. And then here I've got five wires, six wires. Uh, I've got a 12 volt plus and minus. Okay, good. So they wouldn't have a minus. Minus would be an integrated into this. I've got normally open, common, normally open, common. So that's good. Um, everything I need is on these schematics. And I think what I might do is kind of go over and get a like a, a grease board and kind of draw out the um, schematic on how we're going to do this, kind of like with crayons and a grease board. I'm a Marine. I like my crayons, right? So we're going to be installing this, but that's towards the end of what we're going to do. But um, the first thing, let me go get some tools, and I see that this battery here is in a, um, they've already got a, f a frame that the battery fits in, so I need to find out if my battery box is even going to fit in that, or if I have to cut that out. Um, so that's going to be my first task, is to remove this battery and see if this battery box will fit in there. And um, now... On the batteries, you've got a group 24, group 27, uh, and then you've got these marine batteries, these RV marine batteries. For this application, you really only need a deep cycle battery, uh, not a starting battery. The marine RV battery is kind of like a hybrid. Um, if it was in an RV application, you might need to A, start your generator, which is an engine, or you might need to run your lights. 
So if you're using that battery on a, on a boat, then you might need to run your trolling motor or your navigation lights. So the battery can do both starting and deep cycle. So it's a hybrid between both modes, okay? Um, so let's just say for an analogy that your battery is 100 bucks, well, let's just keep it simple. $50 is the starting part of it. $50 is the deep cycle part of it. That might work in an RV. That might work on a boat. In this instance, there's really no, I'm not starting anything. All I'm doing is running this motor right here. So a deep cycle battery would be the best battery to get for this. Now they do make tw you know 12 volt deep cycle batteries, but um, for our purposes, we're just going to go with one of these marine. I don't even know if this even says marine on it. Does it say? Yeah, it says marine battery. So there's a portion of this battery. And yeah, here it says right here, cold cranking amps. So. I'm not starting anything. I'm not cranking anything. So there's no benefit of having any any cold cranking apps on this battery. I will never, ever, ever use this battery to start anything. It's just going to run this motor. Um, so in that instance, we would want reserve capacity or um, amp hours. Um, so that's enough on the battery part. Um, I'm not saying don't get a marine battery, but I just wanted you to understand the differences between a pure deep cycle battery, a pure starting battery, and then a marine battery. Um, a marine battery is a hybrid between the both of them, okay? Um, so what that is to say is in the plates, you've got thick plates and thin plates, thick plates and thin plates, okay? So um, let uh, I'm going to grab some tools and pull this out, and uh, I might need to cut this metal frame out. And I understand now why they did not put a battery box in it, because the, um, the metal frame would have not allowed it. But I really do want the battery in a battery box. I want to protect these posts. If, uh, if um, something were to touch this and touch metal, then we've got a direct short and we'll, we'll destroy our battery in short order. So um, the first order of business is to get the battery box to fit in here. And um, we own a mobile RV service business, so I have several battery box sizes. So we'll try to get this Group 27 battery into um, a battery box. So that's our first task. When you disconnect a battery, it's important to disconnect the negative side first. By doing that, it doesn't matter if, if these sides touch because it's all grounded. And so when I take the negative off, it there's no more, I'm reducing my risk of, I might need to get my wrenches, there we go. Yes, I have wrenches, but let's just try to use this. By um, taking my negative off first, I'm reducing the potential. So now that the negative is off and it's not touching the negative post of the battery, if this metal touches metal, I'm not completing my circuit, okay? Um, so let's take these off as well. Now, that's okay, we'll get it because we're going to pull the battery out. Now when I take this off, what I want to do, I'm going to be following my wires anyway. But I just want to take like a little tie wrap and um, it just tells me where we're going with everything, okay? Um, Tie wraps are not that expensive. So I don't have to then go back and try to figure out where, who's plus and who's minus on these wires because I tie wrapped them together right when I took them off. A little trade craft. The other benefit of doing it, of tying your cable ties together, or cable ties, your batteries together is you're not gonna forget one. So now this this positive post is rendered relatively safe because he's not bonded to the frame. So if for some reason this pair of pliers um, slip, I'm not touching ground. Okay. So now our battery is free. I'm just going to drop those down and pull the battery out. Okay. Now let's get our nuts. curious if this battery box was going to work. I, I can tell you right now it's going to be a little bit too big. He's got the width, but uh, tape measure. There you are. I know he's not going to fit, but I'm curious how much he's not going to fit. So I need about 13 and a half, and I've got, 
I've got uh, about uh, 12 and a quarter. So let me look at some of my battery box options that I might have. I just grabbed this one thinking it would work right away. But when I did it, I didn't know that they had this box welded in place. We could cut this box out, this little frame. We could cut it out if we have to, to make this fit. But um, let me just go look at my battery boxes and see what I could find. Okay, so this got a little bit more exciting. I have a, uh, okay, so we're talking about battery sizes. Um, you've got your A, your AA, your, I'm sorry, your, um, your AAA, your AA, your D, your C. When you get into automotive, it's a group 24, group 27, uh, golf cart, things like that. So it all has to do with the battery bank size and cold cranking amps when you get into those group numbers. This is a group 27 battery that I chose to put in here. I don't remember what came with this, but I didn't like it. So um, I put um, a battery in it that if I don't charge it, so this is a battery charger that came with this. It was integrated into the thing and I, I keep it plugged in. Oh, sorry, I moved you. But I keep this thing plugged in so we can kind of monitor our battery voltage. Um, there's no battery connected to it right now, so it's not going to work. But um, so I like a Group 27 battery. It's got a nice deep battery bank. And uh, sometimes we'll use this trailer to make 10, 15 loads a day. And so this battery needs to have a big battery bank in order to work all day and not to be plugged in after making five or six dumps. So Group 27 is what I went, what I opted for. If I run into problems and the Group 27 just doesn't make it through the whole day of a lot of hard work, then at that point I would probably get two deep cycle golf cart batteries, two six volts and wire those in series to give me 12 volts. So anyway, yeah, so I have a group 27 box. This is a group 27 box. I've got group 24 boxes and I've got a, the, the six volt golf cart battery boxes. So um, the group 27 battery will not fit in a group 24 box. So this is the box that's gonna have to fit in my spot. And um, so I've got my, it's wide enough, but it's not, this thing's not long enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a grinder. It's going to be very exciting, make a lot of sparks. And basically I'm going to grind off where they have made their welds. And if I grind off where they've made their welds, here, here, like a couple spots, then um, hopefully this thing will just come right out. And I'll, I totally want to take this whole little metal frame thing out of here. So. Um, what I'll probably do is that'll take me some time to get that done. I'll keep rolling and you can kind of watch me cussing and discussing and trying to get this thing out. But uh, it will come out. Um, worst case, I've got a torch and we'll get it out that way. Um, but I think the grinder, we could just grind the welds that they did and the whole thing will pop right out. And uh, then we put our battery box in. So um, I think that'll finish up our day today. I did want to look at one more dimension. Um, yeah, so if I put this in here, I put it in an upside down to get my my heights. So honestly, really what I need, and in fact, you know what I'm thinking now that I put this in upside down? I'm glad I did that. I like the idea of leaving this part of the frame and this part of the frame because that's going to hold it in place. So really what I need to do is just cut off this part right here. So that's the task at hand is to get rid of this piece of this. So I'm going to cut right down through here, cut the bottom off and cut up the side and that will allow my box to fit. I need to come out just a little bit more right here. So um, I'm going to get my grinder with the cutting wheel. It almost sliced my arm off. There's a scar right there because of that grinder. So me and that grinder have a history. That was kind of exciting. It cut it right down to the bone, but it was glowing so hot that it cauterized my skin. And I remember right when it happened, there was a buddy with me and I looked right in and I could see the bone. It was very exciting. The other guy passed out and I'm just like, oh, check that out. Oh, me. Cool. You can see the bone right there. But uh, I don't have any feeling down through here. And every once in a while, it feels like an ice pick is hitting right there. But I've got full use of it. But that's a really cool scar from the grinder you're about to meet. So uh, I'm going to suit myself up with some protective equipment because sparks are going to be going everywhere and kind of render all this out of the way. And um, I don't want those hot sparks to be melting my wire, so I'll probably put something here to block it, but let's get busy. Okay, I'm rigged up in my welding jacket, and I've got a full face visor and my headphones here. And uh, so I'm just gonna make a lot of noise. We'll probably block this part out and play some hillbilly music or something fun. <laughs> I don't know, I love my hillbilly music. But uh, so anyway, I'm gonna protect my ears and put my visor down and start grinding. I had to take the safety handle off this thing, so I'm going to be holding it with two hands. I just couldn't fit it all up in there, so here we go.
um, I might go get a big hammer. And uh, I've got quite a bit of it cut already, but I think a big hammer might help uh, break some of this. I'll probably need to cut through this. And what I might do is, uh, what the saw, uh, what the grinder can't get, I'll get a sawzall and kind of nose up in there and get a little bit more out of it. So, hammer and maybe a sawzall. I'll be right back. Okay, we're losing some light, but um, I've got a hammer. And I'm just going to whack that a little bit and see if my um, grinding down the bottom there has broken that free. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's broke free. So we just need to finish here and finish here and we'll be good. Sharper blade would probably do well there. We get a new blade. Okay, we got that side freed up. Uh, let me hit that. Put this down. Okay, so we got that free. All the way across. And so now it's just this little weld right there. And, and then we'll be done. He's not gonna, he's not gonna like me. Um, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> yeah. Uh okay. Let's just wiggle it back and forth. Cause once I get this piece off, I can take the grinder and smooth it down, can't I? We just gotta break that weld. We got that out. So now I'm going to change my wheel from a cutoff wheel to a grinding wheel and we'll just kind of smooth some of this out a little bit. But let's just do a dry fit real quick, like a dress rehearsal to see how we're doing here. <laughs> this is fun. The next trick is getting this thing in here. That's probably why they didn't put a battery box in. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're gonna have a victory here very soon. Um, but because of my personality, I am going to uh, grind those little metal pieces off. It just, and I'm probably even gonna paint it. It's just my personality type. So, So I'm going to change this over to a, uh, a grinding wheel versus a cutoff wheel, and we'll clean up some of these. There's a big bump right here. We'll clean up some of that, maybe smooth some of that out, and, um, and then we'll be done. I like that the rest of this is in here because it's going to keep that battery box in place. It can't go that way, that way, or this way, or that way. Okay, so changing out the wheel, grinding this, and then we'll uh, clean it up and paint it, and then I'll put my battery box in there. And I think because of lighting, we'll stop with that. I'm not going to do any more recording tonight, but I'm going to. But basically, you don't need to see me grind this smooth and paint it. But um, when we pick this thing back up in the morning, um, this will be ready to go, and we'll have the battery. I'll probably have the battery box and the battery in it, and um, 
that's what we'll pick up. All right, so where I'm at now is I've got the battery box in where I like it. It's, 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 it's nice. Um, when we put the battery strap on, which is in this bag here, it'll hold it in place. So I'm okay with that. And uh, so I put the battery box in, I got the battery in, I got my anti-corrosion um, little pads on my battery posts. Um, and I was just doing a dress rehearsal again on this thing. And um, I was putting this cover in, but I'm gonna have to cut this ear off right here because it won't fit. And further, I understand now why they didn't put a battery box in this thing, because this thing is really fighting me. If I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have enough clearance if I can get this cover on. But let me show you what I'm dealing with here. Okay, so he's good. But, um, so what I'm fighting right now is this ear right here. So I'm going to basically cut this ear off. And, uh, cause this cover needs to go that way just a little bit more about the width of this ear. But if you look right here, I'm flush with the, with the lid. So I'm pleased with, with the fit and finish of this and it will keep it protected a little bit. So cut the ear off and then, uh, we'll see if we can get it to fit. And then all my wires will come through these vents right here. Okay. So let's get this thing back out. And I'm going to cut this ear off. Now, these batteries are ones that take water. And uh, distilled water only. So I'm going to take my pick here and just kind of pop up on these. I mean, while I'm going through all this effort, might as well check the water condition. Because once I get the cover on, it's going to be a pain to get the cover back off. Um, these are okay. I might add just a little bit. What you're looking for is there's a fill port. And it's part of this plastic molded cover that goes down inside. And the, so you want to fill the water, distilled water, up to where it just touches the bottom of the fill port. And so I'm just a little low. So since it's going to be, I mean, I'm doing this, so might as well just what we call top the batteries off. Topping the batteries off does not mean fill it up to the top of the ports here. It just means to the, to the bottom of the fill port. And the fill port is the part of the plastic that goes down, okay? And you want there to be some room to um, for expansion contraction there, okay? So I will fill these up with distilled water, but I do want to cut this ear off here and um, get this cover to work. Beautiful. Let's just see how close we got. Okay. A little bit more right here. I can see just a little bit more right there. I need to cut off. This little wedge piece is what's fighting me right there. So let's get that off. Let's see here. Let's go at it. Maybe like this.
that might be just enough to get this thing on here. Okay, so we got the cover on, the tabs are in, let's make sure it closes. Yeah. Okay, so we won the battle. And it's not that big of a deal to get the thing off. We'll have a strap that goes over this thing that'll hold this in place. So I think what I'm going to do is break this video up into three parts so you don't have to watch the whole thing just to get to the part where I'm going to be doing the automation. So uh, I'll probably go back to the beginning and make the announcement. I'm going to break this up into three parts. But I'm going to finish this part of the video here with installing a battery box. Uh, the next part of the video, part two, is what I'll call it. Where did I put the other part of this. It's around here somewhere. Um, I want to figure out where I'm going to put this uh, switch. And um, if I've got enough room... Oh, here it is. It fell. So um, part two is this this switch. So I, I, I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm going to break this up into three parts because um, I think that would be a better way to go. So I'm going to figure out where to mount the switch. And uh, Maybe I'll do it on the back, that way it's kind of hidden and no one would know that it's even there. That might be a neat idea. I like that idea. Actually, there's a spot right back here. Yeah, you know what? So when we come into part two here, I think I'm gonna mount this back here. I just need to lower this to make sure I got clearance, but we'll do that in part two. Um, but I guess I, what I'm saying is I wanna, I don't want to advertise that this is there. If you're a bad guy trying to steal my stuff, I kind of want to keep this part of it a little hidden. I mean, you're going to see that part right there, but I want to make it a little bit difficult for you. I want you to have to spend some time figuring this thing out before you finally just give up on it because you can't get that thing to close. And now you've got this stupid battery box you got to fight. And um, yeah, it's just... Now, here's another thing. If you got got um, old cell phone that you can connect to Wi-Fi. Um, we could put a uh, module on here where if I'll be plugged in, okay? So if I were to unplug this, then that um, there's an app where when it sees power dis uh, disconnected, you would put the cell phone in here basically, okay? That's connected to Wi-Fi, which I have Wi-Fi throughout my property. So when the phone loses AC power, then it basically sends out a Wi-Fi alert. So that might be a neat thing a great use for these old cell phones that can basically use that as an alarm system. So, okay, so part two is going to be um, installing this. And then part three, I'll make it part three is where we're going to basically wire this up. Okay, so we're going to finish part one here. And so I will say, thanks for watching. And um, around here, we keep things kept simple. My last name is Kep, so my wife came up with the idea of kept simple. So, um, there you go. It's our last name. Cup simple. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, if you find fighting, watching me fight and how I put this in, if you've got a dump trailer, give us a thumb up, like, subscribe, because we've got a whole bunch more of this type of stuff coming out. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.